if there's ever a time where we needed to pull together as believers of Christ and, and unite and try to strengthen and make the world a better place, it's now. Mm-hmm. And that, that sounds like he's yeah. preaching our message. <laughs> there's one body, one church, one spirit, one hope. The realities of the faith, the ra- realities that unify us are already there. Christ prayed for unity. What should we be praying for? Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the one prayer request of Jesus. Think about it in the Bible that we actually have a say in whether or not it comes to fruition or not. I think in what God has done in you guys in uh, in this podcast and the, the multitude of folks that you're reaching, the diversity, whatever God intended when, he's, when you started this, he's able to bring it to completion. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Whole Church Podcast. I am one of your co-hosts, Joshua Knoll, here with your other co-host, TJ Tiberius Juan Blackwell. Howdy. And also our special guest, Eric Nevins, who is the head of the Christian Podcasters Association. We're going to be talking to him about uh, about a lot of really cool stuff, about uh, how podcasts can bring us together, how we're not competitors. Um, we're going to talk about a summit he has coming up in January that we're really excited to hear about, how we're going to get people together and better equip people to do podcast work or ministry work, really, is what I consider this. So um, a lot of great stuff to cover. Really excited to talk to him. Um but before we do, we always like to review some of our audience, what they've been up to recently. Um, right now, we're just going to let you know uh, we had one more person subscribe to our newsletter. And um, yeah, we got a, we've been getting a couple of emails in about the word of the month, which is something we do in our newsletter. So we're really excited that people are participating in that. And we look forward to doing more with that for you guys. I'll give you a sneak peek. Next month, we're going to be talking about the difference of the word for profit in Old Testament and in New Testament. So hang in there. If you're not part of that already, go ahead and join our newsletter. Just email us at theholechurch at gmail.com, and we'll include you in that. So without further ado, uh, Eric, we always like to start with a silly question, just because it helps ease the tension. And because I grew up on VeggieTales, so, you know, I'm always silly song with Larry. But this is silly question with Josh. And uh, I know you actually recently got to talk to the creator of VeggieTales. So uh, that's exciting. We'll, hopefully we'll get to talk about that in a second. But first. I want to ask you, and we'll answer first, give you time to think about it. If you could have any one superpower, but that superpower is only active while you're on your own property, what power would you choose? TJ, do you want to go first? I'd really rather not. Okay. I'll, I'll say. <laughs> Let me go. Okay. I, All right, go ahead. I would, if it were, if I could have any one superpower, but it was only active on my property, I would do super speed. And I'll tell you why. Because I could keep the house clean, keep the yard, right? All that stuff. Yeah. Super fast and spend all the rest of my time doing something else. Wouldn't matter if I was on my property or not. Genius. Genius. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to go with, uh, I want that like super intelligence. If, if, that, does that, if that can be included as a superpower. Because then I could work from home, figure out ways to make more money and continuously buy more and more property so that my power works further and further. <laughs> That's the yeah, that would be my goal. I like that. Mm-hmm. All right, TJ. I, this is a hard question. Uh, not You're because welcome. the question itself is complex, but because I am stupid. <laughs> what? I, uh, I just... I, I really think I would have to go with time travel. Because... While it is only on my property, if I time travel far enough back, I will find something that is worth enough money to bring it back and sell it. Yeah. And then you can just do what I'm doing and keep getting more property. There you go. Yeah. Well, okay. So here's the thing, man, with, with time travel, even if you only go back to your property, all you got to do is go back far enough to buy Apple stock, right? Or IBM or Or Bitcoin, Bitcoin. Yeah. All those. Oh man! Just go to 2009. Spend five hundred dollars on Bitcoin when it cost less than <laughs> one thousandth of a penny. That's the spirit. And, and, and then go to 2016 and sell it all. Yeah, yeah. we're good. Yeah, just yeah. Actually, that question was inspired by like this bit I've always had like in my head, where I'm like, uh, you know, people talk about if they could have any one superpower. I'm like, you know, realistically, if we had superpowers, most of us would be fat and even lazier. Like if we had the force, we would just levitate our food out of the fridge to us. We wouldn't do anything cool with it. But anyway, that, that's really where that, that question came from. Because I'm like, huh, interesting concept. 
Yeah. I'd probably play basketball with the force. That that would be cool. Be yeah, that'd be a lot of fun, actually. Way easier. Yeah. All right. So, uh, welcome to the real podcast. Uh, <laughs> one thing we believe is extremely important to church unity is to hear one another's story of how we came to Christ. Uh, would you mind telling us your testimony, Eric? Yeah. Okay. Well, first of all, I have to say, I love that because my whole podcast is basically about te- people telling me their story. So, um, and that goes into my, into my story a lot. I'll give you the kind of the short version and then whatever you guys want to ask about, you can. Uh, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, definitely though, we had some challenges, you know, the, the world was a little different at church versus home. Um, and so, you know, but I grew up and I, I found pretty quickly I wanted to be creative and I enjoyed that. Eventually ended up um, going to college and deciding to be a pastor. Um, I kind of had that moment as a kid where I gave my life to Christ, right? And as a teenager, I was always, I don't know if it's right to say rededication, but you guys know what I'm talking about, right? That whole thing. Yeah. with oh, Okay. Yeah. Yes. I want to serve God. I want to serve God. And so eventually that manifested itself in or came up to, uh, you know, wanting to be a pastor. Um, I did that, but, uh, you know, I quickly found that, uh, life was, was different than I kind of thought it should be, or thought thought it would be a lot of things happened. Um, I was in, I got my degree in biblical studies, started seminary, and this was like right in 2001, 2002, ended up dropping out in what I affectionately say was, three years, two kids and one dark night of the soul. (laughs) And during that season is when I had a moment where I really, um, I felt God's love for the first time in a a really long time, had a moment of surrender where I was like, God, okay, I can't do this on my own. I've been trying and it's not working. And I was able to, um, you know, just kind of relinquish that and and say, I was going to follow where, where he wanted me to go. Uh, so that's kind of the the short version. There's obviously a whole lot more to that, but well, I can tell you whatever else you want. Yeah, I mean, it's really interesting to me how many times, you know, we, we ask this question a lot. And, you know, a lot of people who grew up in the church or are involved in ministry now, you know, a lot of them have that kind of story of, I kind of was always saved, but then, you know, I struggled. And then as I went to college or, you know, seminary or whatever, I realized actually there, there was a lot more wrong than I thought there was. Cause you just keep pushing forward and you don't really reflect yeah. on yourself a lot of the time. So it's interesting that, you know, I mean, it's cool to know it wasn't just me. Yeah. Obviously it's, it's not just Eric. <laughs> well, and, uh, so I actually, I actually say that's, that's the spiritual journey. That's what it's like. And so I don't know how it was where you grew up, but when I grew up the testimony time, whenever somebody would tell their testimony, it was three basic steps. My life was terrible. Then I met Jesus and now my life is great. Right. Yeah. Uh, except that's great. That's wonderful. Except for all the other things that happen in life. And if you go back and study, so I ended up going to seminary, finishing seminary, Denver seminary. And and I did an emphasis in uh, spiritual formation because I always had this question, how do we grow in Christ? How do you actually do that? And so today that's what I do on my podcast. I take people, I have them go through their story and we look at each stage of the journey, but in that journey, um, you know, you have different seasons. And so it's, it's really no surprise if you study any of the saints or any of the, like, you have to go into the Catholic writers uh, in order to do that. But when you start studying them, it's no surprise that you would have a time later. Like that's why I said I had a dark night of the soul, right? Cause that's what it took for me to relinquish some of my own desire to control my own life. Right. I had to, I had to get through that. So I don't think it's surprising. I think that's just the way it is. And if you're finding that in other people, I, I don't, I believe that. Yeah. I mean, it's, um, it's fun. I'm weary of telling the story because I don't remember all the details exactly, but you know, with um, the story of Jonah, it's really interesting how, you know, he, he was a prophet. I mean, he wasn't wrong with God. He was right. But then, you know, he strayed a little bit. God had to get swallowed by a whale. And then he got right again. And then he was like, I'm going to wait for their destruction. And, and the book actually ends with God asking him a question. You yeah. never really get a firm, hey, he was bad and then saved, stored. You get a question. And for a lot of us, that's what it is. You know, when you look at your life right now, you're left with that question. Am I continuing to go forward? Am I learning from 
the big fish or am I just going to go back to it? And you know, you, that's uh Hebrews, you know, you work out your own salvation, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I think that's a hundred percent right. I think there's a lot more room for wrestling with God than uh, certainly I was taught growing up. I was taught, Hey, God is sovereign. God is the one who's in charge. And he certainly is. I'm not going to deny that, yeah. but he also wants to be with us and he, he's willing. So he stepped into that moment with Jonah to say, Hey, why should I, you know, not care about these people? Don't you know how many kids are here? Don't you know how many animals are here? Why would I want to destroy them? Like, and so he's contending with Jonah. We don't get an answer to that. We just kind of learn a little something about God, but um, that I think that's true. And that's why one of my favorite books, another prophet is Habakkuk, right? Where he wrestles with God. He goes back and forth, back and forth. He ends in worship, but he was willing to say, you know what, God, I'm going to sit down and I'm going to wait until I see what kind of answer you're going to give me because I want one. And God shows up and he doesn't condemn him. He just gives him the answer. Yeah. It's good stuff. It's good stuff. So uh, before, and we could, we could stay all day just talking about that, man, but we got so much more we want to cover while we have you. So uh, I didn't want to ask, what denomination are you a part of, if any? Yeah, well, I grew up evangelical free, um, which is basically, I always thought that name was weird because it's like cholesterol free, fat free, evangelical free. But right. really, like you're telling it's almost that you were Catholic or Orthodox. I was like, well, uh, <laughs> no, no. Just anti-evangelical. Is, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No, so, but today I go to a non-denominational church that has Presbyterian roots. Uh, so that's kind of, so we're sort of, sort of a reformed polity, but not really mm-hmm. uh, yeah. that way. Yeah. Like. Reformed adjacent. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah. All right. So what would you say is unique about your church? Yeah. Well, our church had a shopping center before it was cool. So... Mm-hmm. Oh. We actually have with the we where we worship used to be a Safeway, and I like to imagine that where I sit used to be the donut rack. I don't know if that's true or not, <laughs> but uh, it it did, and it uh, we've we've had it for I don't know since the '90s, and I just love the way that we're able to use it. So we actually have 90 plus people or different groups come into our um, our church to use our building, our facility. We have an early learning center that serves the community with reasonably priced childcare. We um, normally have a coffee shop. COVID's kind of messed that up a little bit. <laughs> yeah. um, we have a resale shop for a ministry that um, serves people in this area. It's a national ministry, but the local chapter has a resale shop in our place. And so like when we do things, when we serve the homeless in our area, we can give them a coupon to go down there and, and buy stuff, um, which I think is really awesome. And uh, we have, we have a number of other things in there, but, it helps to kind of like, for instance, when we had to pave the, the repave the parking lot, well, the, all that income had been saved. And so we were able to use that. So I think awesome. we think about ministry a little differently, which we were able to use money, you know, to, from our businesses to take care of some of the stuff that most churches are putting a lot of money into. And then we can actually go into the ministry, you know, with the rest of that, that kind of funds. Wow. That's really cool. I think it's cool. I love that. Yeah, yeah that's really cool, man. Pretty, pretty solid, you know, mm-hmm. horizontal integration. Yeah, you know. it's a good plan. <laughs> All right. So uh, another thing we like to do to help us become more familiar with our guests' theology is our speed round segment. Uh, we're going to ask you a series of questions, and all that we ask is that you answer them in a sentence or less. Okay. And I if you can't do that, it's yeah, fantastic. If, yeah, if you can't do it, then you just say pass and we skip it. How does that sound? Okay, very good. <laughs> All right. Are you ready? Let's go. How do you define church? The gathering of God's people. What are your beliefs on the doctrine of the elect? Maybe. Mm. <laughs> do you cool. believe do you believe in a continuation of the gifts of the spirit? 100% without a doubt, which has changed, but I do. <laughs> do you believe speaking in tongues is the initial evidence of baptism of the Holy Spirit? I have no idea what to think about speaking in tongues. Um, so I, <laughs> I've never actually been in a, a denomination that does that. So I'm not sure. Reasonable. Yeah. Uh, 
Do you believe in continual sanctification? Yes, I do. Uh, what is your view on the authority of scripture and church tradition? Okay, you're limiting the way one sentence on this one. This is the one thing that I actually wrestle with the most right now. So I absolutely believe in scripture. I believe that it reveals God. It reveals him, his heart toward humanity and our ability to have a relationship with him. But I wrestle with, if you accept scripture, you have to accept the church and its authority as well. And so I'm, I've got a little bit of tension there, to be honest with you. All right. Uh, who do you believe wrote the first five books of the Bible? I don't have any reason to doubt that Moses at least wrote some of it, um, in my opinion. So. Right. Uh, how many of the sacraments do you hold to, if any? I am so, okay, I grew up evangelical, so we had, like, baptism, and that was it, right? Or in communion, I uh, guess. We could read off the list if, you, if it helps. I don't know. I've got it right here, but I, like, <laughs> so I don't, I, I don't know. Sacraments are not really a thing that I yeah. care about that much. <laughs> I'm very evangelical. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I get that. And mm-hmm. uh, that's it. As I, you did I pass? You passed, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Flying colors. TJ offers fake certificates to everybody, pretty much. Yeah. So, <laughs> you'll get to pretend one of those in the mail. So You're not going to demand my faith card. I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> if you don't expect <laughs> it's coming, then you'll never be disappointed. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but that's true. <laughs> All right, man. So... Eric, you mentioned to me that you're pretty passionate about the empowering others to use their spiritual gifts. Uh, what do you think is the most important thing churches can do to kind of encourage people in that area? Yeah, well, I think you have to give people um, authority to do that. You know, in some churches, the authority all rests on the people who get paid to be there. Um, and I think that's a big, big mistake. Uh, so I think if you want people to use their spiritual gifts, you have to create space for them to use it and you have to allow them to fail. It's okay for them to fail. Um, they have to, you know, I don't know about you, but, uh, like when I started podcasting, I wasn't very good at it, right? Like people, somebody told me, told me this earlier this year, they said, I listen to your podcast because when I listen to the beginning ones, I can tell how much you've grown. I was like, Oh, Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, we're still not good at it. Well, yeah. time, hopefully right? we get that moment eventually. It, it, you know? It's skill. <laughs> it's skill. And I think spiritual giftings, you know, unless we're talking about something like in Acts 2, where people speak in tongues or God's teleport somebody like Philip. I don't know how that happened. But those kinds of things, like those are things that that God does supernaturally in the moment. But for the most for most of us, we develop those skills. And we just got to give people space. That's, that's a long way to say that. Right. And uh, what can people who aren't in leadership roles who are listening to this episode do to help better empower one another to use their gifts? Well, I think you can always ask the question and learn to, to be on the lookout for what people are good at and see what really lights them up and makes them happy um, and give them an opportunity to serve you, you know, if, if uh, somebody's really great at hospitality, they'll just ask them to put out the donuts on Sunday. Like ask them to help you host an event, right? Or, or something at your house and give, just give them a chance. Something practical. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what do you think we would see happen in the church? What would change if everyone just started doing that? Yeah. Well, I think that if we, uh, if we started making space for everyone to operate in their gifts, I think you would see the influence of the church explode. I think that people would be able to, the, I think people who aren't Christians would see that we care about each other. That's not just about the money. It's not just about the, the power and the authority. It's not about protecting the church. It's about bringing the truth. It's about bringing the kingdom of God, the upside down and strange kingdom of God where, where the, the poor are blessed. Right. Uh-huh. that uh, would happen. I think you'd see a revival, quite honestly. Hey, Amen. Right, that would be awesome. So we mentioned it before. You're the head of the Christian Podcasters Association, which is something that I'm a part of on Facebook and TJ by association, I guess. It's a, it's a really helpful group. It's where um, we got a few of our more recent guests, uh, Michaela Deegan, um, yeah. Amy Watson, a, f- a few of our other guests that have been on here came from that group that you lead and help us all kind of learn how to be better podcasters from one another. Um, we've already heard some great stories, but uh, we're sure you've heard better ones. Uh, can you share with us maybe some of the 
your what you think is the most interesting stories you've heard behind some of the podcasts on that group? Mm. Yeah, I absolutely love the way that you can have diversity. So this gets to what we were talking about earlier, right? This is one of the reasons I love podcasting because every, you can make a podcast about whatever you're interested in, right? So like my friend, Chris Starin, who helps kind of run the group, has a podcast uh, called Letters from, or called, sorry, called uh, Truce. Um, and he talks about how things that have glommed onto the Christian church in the United States and then he kind of explains how that happened. So it's kind of part history, part theology, part, um, I don't, I don't know what else. Like it's just, it's very highly produced and he does a really good job of, of putting those together. And he did that cause he didn't, he, he was frustrated with all those things, right? He didn't want to see those things continue to happen. So he wanted to create a platform that would inform people about it. And it's, he does an excellent job. He used to be a filmmaker. Um, the other one, I mentioned letters from home on accident there, uh, Meg Gleesner, uh, who also helps with the, with the group has a show called letters from home. And she kind of looks at her show as like these letters that, um, that God is, is writing in the world. And so she has these long conversations. Fantastic. Um, I love all that. Uh, there's, there's a whole bunch of others, you know, there's, there's Seth price who has a show called, can I say this at church? And he literally was wrestling with some of these theological issues like we talked about. And he just, he was talking to his friend. He goes, can I even say this at church? And that's how the guy came up with the name for a show. And he wrestles with some of those things mm-hmm. and with some different conclusions sometimes. Cause it goes deep into why do we believe this? Why do we, you know, why do we think that? But you know what? He loves the Lord. Like he loves the Lord. So, yeah, I haven't heard that one yet. I'll have to check it out. That sounds he's fascinating. Awesome. Really good stuff. All right. Uh, so do you believe that having, so many different voices out there in the Christian podcasting world is helpful to Christian unity. Yeah, you know, I do. And so I think this represents the body of Christ, right? So that there's a, this passage in first Corinthians and there's others that talk about the body and how we need all of the, all of them. I think we need all of those perspectives and we need everyone to kind of bring something different to help us get to, to where we're going. Um, in our group, in Christian Podcasters Association, we do not talk theology. I don't know if you guys have noticed that. Some, I don't know if other groups always do, but um, I have been very careful because I know that there are people in there who uh, are from all kinds of different theological backgrounds, and I'm okay with that. Um, if as uh, you know, we all, the one thing we all have in common is that we love Jesus, and that's that's what I care about. Um, and, you know, you're going to reach different people with your voice. So that's, that's okay. As far as I'm concerned. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. No, I mean, I noticed it's a very pragmatic group, something I really yeah. appreciate. Yeah. I did that on purpose. Cause I, I just, it's I spent my twenties, like digging into all kinds of theology and arguing with a lot of different people. And I yeah. realized that just doesn't actually get you where you need to go. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, plus, as silly as it is, you know, I, I'll, I'll even fault myself, you know, you see something on a group like that of someone saying, I believe, you know, whatever it may be, I won't give an example because I will undoubtedly insult someone, but, you know, someone give some kind of theology that I'm like strongly disagree with than anything they post about other things. I, I'm immediately more cautious right. to even want to speak to them. And that, that could be problematic. So it's, I, mean, I think it's really good to kind of uh, avoid that um, until you're able to speak in person to someone. Yeah. It's yeah. So story. let me yeah. give you an example. So there's, there's a guy named James early in the, in the group. He's got a show called the Bible speaks to you. And I just interviewed him for my podcast. I'm going to release that. It'll be my last one of this year. And yeah. uh, he is, he's a Christian scientist. And he said that he was very upfront about that. Now, I don't know if you know anything about Christian scientists, theology, Um they have some different views about the Trinity. They've got some, some different views. Definitely. Uh, we don't agree on everything, right? Yeah. What I know of James early and in the conversations I've had with him is he loves Jesus. Like we might have different idea. We might have some different theological things on fundamental things even, but I know that he's pursuing Jesus as best, as hard as he can. Right. Yeah. Man, awesome. those are the kind of people I want to be my friends. <laughs> yeah, man. Amen. All right. So uh, do you think that this mass sea of different podcasts could be harmful in any way and drowning out some voices with 
the plethora of others. Yeah, that's a good question. Do you mean like just because some are louder than others or get more attention? Well, just yeah. So many. I mean, what, what's the chances of someone running across mm. your podcast when there's 20,000 others? Right? Would it be more yeah. helpful to just have, hey, these are our two, our 10 designated Christian podcasts and we all just support them? <laughs> Well, I don't think I'd have a chance. So the the beautiful thing about <laughs> yeah. podcasting is that there are no gatekeepers, right? So one of the problems in the last, especially at the end of the last century was that there were so many people that you couldn't get access. It was hard to get access, hard to get on the air, right? It was hard to get, mm-hmm. um, you know, a, a book deal. It was hard to get whatever. Uh, well, now I can do all that myself, yeah. right? I can have my own website. I can start a podcast. I can self-publish a book. Nobody can tell me no. So I can go out and take the message. I think God has, has shown me or my story, whatever it is, and I can put it out there. And I think that is actually a beautiful and wonderful thing. In fact, I think it's how the gospel goes out in the next, not just century, but let's say two, three, or maybe five centuries. I think it's because ordinary people say, I've, I've had this experience with God and I want to tell other people about it. I think that, that matters. So as far as like drowning out other people, you're always going to have that. But here's the thing with podcasting, podcasting right now, there are about um, one point, I want to say six to eight. So, you know, million podcasts, right? So about 1,600,000 to 1,800,000 podcasts. Um, That seems like a lot until you realize that YouTube has 31 million channels on it. All right. There are 20 plus million blogs in the world. So right now, podcasting is an opportunity to get in. However many of those are Christians, you know, I I wish that the sermons, all the people taking their sermons and turning them into podcasts would uh, be a separate category. So we kind of had a better idea of how many were Christian podcasts versus sermon podcasts. But it's you you it's a small pond still that you're playing in, whether whether you know you think it is or not. So when I started four years ago, it was even smaller. So I'm, I'm, I think there's tons of opportunity there. Yeah. And what I'm saying, just to kind of add on to what you're saying, man, because um, even in like the groups, like what we have, the Christian podcasters association, you know, you'll see, you know, people on one another's podcasts, you know, I've guessed on a few other people's mm-hmm. and we've had people in ours and it's almost like a Marvel comics, right? Like maybe you would have never heard of Moon Knight, but because there's so many other comments. However, he's also in Spider-Man and he's in Daredevil and he's in this. And all of a sudden you become in love with all of these characters. And the fact that there's more is actually a good thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. All right. So soft no for that. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. So how have you seen podcasting give new opportunities in the church? Yeah. Well, I think, so this goes back to what I was saying, but I really think we have, um, a huge opportunity. I think people, um, you know, like I said, anybody can, can share their message and you can learn, you know, if you always wanted to be in media, you can start your own show and you don't have to be good at it right away. You know, I was terrified and I was so scared right away. Um, but I learned how to do it and I learned how to do an interview and I, I get on interviews now I still do some prep, but I know that I can ask good questions. And so I know that no matter what happens, um, it'll be okay. And we can edit whatever we have to. I think the real opportunity for the church though, is back to what I said earlier, that we, we can um, empower more people, right? I think we can also engage people differently. So I would really love, particularly with like new media, which po- is podcasting and blogging and, and vlogging and all that. Um, I think we have a chance to engage people. I've I've been a little bit disappointed in the last, um, let's say this year, since when a lot of churches just took their service and started streaming it online. Um, That's a, that's fine. That's one way to use it. But I was really sort of hoping that you would see more people go, you know what, this can't just be a, uh, a restream of the thing we were doing before. Because people don't interact that way. They don't learn that way. So I really think the opportunity is to engage people, not just say, hey, come watch my thing. Um, If we do that, I think it'll be it'll be really valuable. I really liked um, 
I don't know if you did it on purpose. There was a phrase that I caught in there where you said empower more people. I mean, that's yeah. just, I would plaster that everywhere across all the church, man. That was just, that's just a good word, you know? Hey everyone, uh, we just wanted to take a quick break to tell you all the ways you can help us keep this show going. Uh, you know, your favorite Church Unity podcast. Yeah, so support us on Patreon for as little as a dollar a month at patreon.com forward slash the whole church podcast. Every dollar counts. Subscribe to our show at your favorite podcast provider, whatever that may be. Leave a review for us on Apple Podcasts. Follow us on social media. Share this episode on your own social media. And you can subscribe to our newsletter by emailing us at thewholechurch at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially that last one yeah, it really keeps you guys updated on what we're doing better than pretty much anything else uh, let's get back to the show yeah so that means that I know you've been waiting on us to ask this question man this is what he's been all about all month really you know every time I look at the Facebook group every time I look at your Facebook it's everywhere we're talking about the Christian Podcast Summit you got coming up here in January right up uh, well, what can you tell us about it yeah, thanks for asking. Yeah, this has been kind of my my work for the last uh, month and a half or so. Uh, Christian Podcast Summit is a online virtual summit that is going to be very targeted in what we talk about. So um, I'm planning on doing many of these, but the first one we're doing on January 22nd and 23rd, 2021. And it's going to be all about social media. And so one of the things that podcasters struggle with when they come into CPA, I always ask them, hey, uh, what is your biggest struggle? And uh, invariably, at least a handful of the people who come in say, finding a new audience, like finding more people to listen to my show. They've also all heard, hey, social media is the way to do that. And, uh, but social media can be confusing, right? Learning, learning all the new tools, figuring out how to actually get engagement. It's so depressing when you post something and you're like, oh, this is great. This is such a good episode. I love this one. And nobody engages with it, right? Nobody clicks it. Nobody listens to it. Nobody responds to anything. Relatable. Right? <laughs> it's the worst. You guys probably have been there. I have yeah. too. So I wanted to create a, com- a conference that would help uh, podcasters learn how to master social media and also build engagement. And so that's what we're going to do. We've got a uh, I think we're going to have about 16 sessions in two days. Um, They're going to be, I don't know, short is not the right word, but they're going to be highly targeted is is the better word. Um, You're going to have a chance to actually do some question and answer with people so that um, the speakers will speak and then we'll do some Q&A and you'll get a chance to ask your questions. And then um, we're going to, where everybody who signs up gets a free t-shirt or gets a t-shirt as part of your, part of your uh, cost. And so, I'm excited about that. Awesome. And uh, right. what, what is the cost since you mentioned it? Yeah. Yeah. You bet. So um, right now, if you go out to Christian podcast summit, it's $119 and that is the early bird price and it will go up. I believe that's, uh, that's coming up soon. So it's, it's, I would recommend buying your ticket now. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And you know, what really is a shame about our engagement is we can't take the easy way out and just put out the most controversial topic possible <laughs> right? and then let it take care of itself. Yeah. Like I, yeah. I follow a guy on Twitter and like last week he posted name a character that went through more pain than her. And it was a picture of Ray from, you know, the sequel trilogy of star Wars. Oh yeah. Yeah. And he had like maybe 10,000 followers and that has reached 27 million people now. So yeah, if only we could do that. But he knows, he knows what he's doing. Right. And so yeah, he knows exactly what he's doing. What, what he did. So I've learned this. I'll, I'll share this with you guys is the, the key is to make it not about you. Right. So right. if you're, if you're sharing on social media and you say, Hey, listen to my thing that some people will see it. But if you engage and you ask a question and you wait for other people's responses, they are, they feel obligated to answer the question. Right. So like, I go on my Facebook page for my, for halfway there. And I ask questions and I do this on my personal one too, um, that all the time. And I'll, I'll leave them open-ended. I'll leave them incomplete um, where, where it's like, okay. Um, then people feel obligated to like fill in the blank for me. 
And they're like, well, yeah, but there's this other thing or that that's, that's a false dichotomy. And they'll tell me all about why it's a false dichotomy. Guess what? I knew that. I don't <laughs> care. What I want is for you to comment on this. So Facebook knows that they should show you my posts. Right. And Tricking the algorithms. Yeah. Yeah. Are we just using it to my advantage? I would say. Yeah. Yeah. Smart. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, that's one thing we're able to do is the questions, which I should work on. But uh, yeah, what, what TJ's point though, you know, a lot of people do use that controversy thing. It's like, Oh yeah. And there's not much controversy in unity. In fact, it's pretty much the opposite of that. So that's true, but you do yeah. kind of got to pick a fight. Right. And so yeah. if, if I, you didn't ask for advice, so take it for what it's worth. But if I were you guys, and if your theme is um, church unity, yeah. I would say your, your enemy is anybody who says you're out if you don't believe this certain thing. Right. Right. Yeah. Like that, well, they, they, they are the people that I would, I would target. And if, and if you do it well, they'll spread the news about your show way better than you ever could. Mm-hmm. I, saw, I saw an interview with Katie Siegel um, from married with children and some other shows. And she talked about how at the beginning of that show, um, they, there was, there's a woman, I think she was a Christian woman who just thought it was terrible. And so she went on this campaign to get it taken off the air and she just raised all this ruckus and it tripled their ratings. Mm-hmm. And so they sent her flowers every year for a long time. Right. Cause they were like, thank you. Cause you kept, they, she literally kept them on the air instead of having the opposite effect. Mm-hmm. And that's why I have to pick great. Right. Smart. Yeah. I feel like we've been foreshadowing the enemy this whole time. And now, uh, we just had it revealed, you know, like when you're watching like a Star Wars show or something, it's kind of like you saw like the silhouette this whole time. And finally it's like, ah, full picture. Yeah. There you go. So if someone could campaign to get us taken off Spotify, that would be <laughs> awesome. <laughs> yeah. Please go ahead and do that. Okay. Right. Well, see, that happened to Joe Rogan though, right? He signs a hundred million. Oh yeah. And people inside Spotify are like, ah, but that becomes news. And then guess what? Everybody wants to listen to Joe Rogan. Yeah. Joe Rogan's unstoppable at this, this point. This is how it goes. Hey. Genius. We all knew that in the nineties when he was like eating snakes live or something. Yeah. Wow. But, you uh, that Fear so, Factor? Yeah, oh yeah. Was he on Fear Factor? Yeah, I believe he that was. was Rogan? That's crazy. <laughs> but uh so about the Christian Podcast Summit. Uh, <laughs> how do you think this event could be helpful to our audience today? Yeah. Um well it depends on who you are. So if you are engaged in social media in any way. Uh, to promote something that you care about. Um, like if you just are the casual social media person, then uh, don't come. But I mean, if you want to pay for a ticket, go, go ahead, but it's not going to be, it's not really for you. If you're yeah, a content you creator, pay for our ticket, <laughs> right. If you, there you go. That They should do yeah. that. Donate <laughs> to these guys. But if you are a content creator of any kind and you're trying to do this on your own and you're confused by social media, you're, you feel like it's, it's just a real, pain, um, or you avoid it altogether, you know, there's a lot of people who do that. Um, then it will teach you how to use social media to promote your podcast, to promote your blog, to promote your book. If that's, that's what you're doing, uh, you know, so that you can engage your audience more effectively and with less effort. And that's what we have to be a podcaster. They could be a blogger, whatever. Yeah. You could be, you could be a vlogger. You could be, you know, a blogger, what, whatever it is, um, you know, but you'll be able to, to reach more people because of what you learned there. We have somebody speaking. I don't know if you know Heather Parody. Um, she does, uh, she has these great TikTok videos. And so I asked her to speak for TikTok. <laughs> TikTok, she's going to do that. Um, we have somebody talking about, Tanya Kuba is going to talk about online community um, and how to build it. Um, we've got some really great people talking about LinkedIn and um, Instagram reels and Instagram just to generally that one that's just Twitter. That's one yeah, Twitter say, yep. yeah. How to use Twitter. And, um, one of, one of the ones I'm excited about is my friend Anna Scheller is going to talk about growing your podcast through Twitter chats. We're actually doing one of those tomorrow, uh, for Christian podcasters association. And I've learned, I've learned so much just from doing it, um, over, a, I've done it off and on this whole year. And so she's going to teach us how to do that. And that's going to be part of the, part of the event, which I think will be very cool. Awesome. Right. Do you think such an event as this could engender unity in any way? Well, I think it will help us. Um, it will help people 
come together. You know, I, I guess, I don't know. It will definitely unify podcasters. I'll give you that. So whoever comes right. to the summit, you'll, you'll feel like you're included. Um, as far as the church, I don't know. It depends. It depends on what you're, what you're doing, you know? Yeah. Right. I mean, anytime yeah. a group of believers with diverse beliefs yeah. get together and it's helping unity in some way. Right. Right. Uh, so how can people sign up to join you? How can we sign up for the summit? Yeah. If you, you can just go to Christian podcast summit.com and that will, that's our landing page. You can go on there you can see all the speakers and you can purchase a ticket right at the bottom there. Wow. Awesome. Super easy. Sounds great. Well, hopefully we'll get some people to join you guys and um, we'll, you know, if we're doing the Q and a, we'll, we'll hear from some of the people listening. Maybe, <laughs> maybe they'll ask uh, during the podcast, uh, summit and we'll hear from them then that'd be great that'd be awesome yeah so uh one thing we like to ask everyone who comes on the show eric is um and, and we want it to be as practical as possible if you can come up with one tangible action that someone could just step away from this podcast whenever it's over they hear the last dun, 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 and they leave something that they can do that would help better maintain unity what would that one thing be yeah, I'm I'm going to say if you can say a kind word to somebody about their gift, about something that they do really well that they do as a superpower that nobody else has but they don't even know it's a superpower because they can't see it. They just think everybody should think that way. Say a kind word, give one sentence or two sentences about why that's valuable to you. You'll you'll do so much good to encourage them in that in that role and to keep going. And that's, uh, if everybody did that, I mean, imagine how much encouragement we could create in, uh, you know, in just a short span of time. Yeah. yeah. What do you think we would see happen if everyone started doing that? Well, I think more people would actually commit to using their gifts and realize that what they do is a gift because it's so um, easy the, the things that you do well for you just go, that's just how it is, right? No, it's not. Like my wife, can think of 15 arguments in the time it takes me to think of one, right? She's just super f- smart. Well, that's a gift, her ability to think fast. So um, if she, you know, if we all were able to do that, to use our gifts more, I think you'll see, you'll see a lot of good. Yeah, I would hope so. Yeah. So everyone just do okay. that. Yeah. Just encourage somebody, man. Yeah, yeah that's, that's something really simple to do. You can do that in 10 seconds or less. <laughs> takes you no time. Takes you no time, but creates a lot of good. Oh yeah, that's uh, yeah. right. That's good stuff. It, it's free. It's easy. It's kind. Who doesn't love those things? You know. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Right. Yeah. So uh, thank you for your time today. Uh, we're gonna get right into the outro, and uh, we'll let you go after that. Uh, thank you all for listening to this point. You're doing great. Uh, <laughs> we like to start our outro with our God moment segment. Uh, we just share what God has been doing with us recently, whether it be a challenge or a blessing or, you know, just something we're thankful for, which, uh, you know, I think is a blessing, but I like yeah. to make Josh go first. Yeah. It gives me a little time. Just tradition at this point. Yeah. Um, man, uh, I'm trying to find the right words for this. It's, uh, it's kind of not even like a substantial thing. Most people might think this is just kind of insignificant, but, um, uh, so recently I work somewhere where, we're able to pray, which is cool. So we have prayer meetings in the morning and, um, you know, I've been including in prayer meetings. Sometimes they'll let me lead prayer and I've been trying to include, you know, that God would bless our attitudes that we can be better lights to those around us and to one another. Right. And that's just sort of something that God placed on me to pray that in the morning. So when we do, and, um, I've been trying to do that. And, uh, one of my coworkers actually mentioned to me, they like, Hey, you got me thinking I'm watching my attitude today. I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. And then, uh, you know, as we were leaving work today, I was actually able to help him. He was taking some of the wooden pallets so we could go have a fire. And I was just able to kind of help him do that and talk a little bit. And, you know, it's not something super significant, I guess, but it, it was a blessing to me just kind of see God at work like that, you know? Yeah. yeah so I guess awesome. that would be my guess. So I, I kind of do this a lot. And I really, I just want you guys to know it's just to emphasize that you should be thankful for the little things mostly. Uh, but also that I love the NHL. <laughs> uh, so, Why? sorry, oh, I'm not it's so good, but, uh, 
with COVID around, you know, uh, there have been lots of changes to the season. Normally it would have started last month, month before. It, uh, yeah, normally it would start two months ago. We have been confirmed for a start date of January 13th, and the divisions are being realigned, which is really good for the Hurricanes because normally we play in the hardest division. That is not the case. And while my God moment is sort of about that, it's mostly about the fact that if you hold that long enough, God will bless you with circumstances you can handle. It's always true. And you can always handle those circumstances anyway. So are you saying that you learned that from this as an example? Or are you yes. saying that God providentially helped the hurricanes? Both things. Okay. Yeah. All right. The hurricanes are God's hockey team. Okay, good to know. Yeah. <laughs> Did you just ask God to make the St. Louis Cardinals sign Adam Wainwright and Yadier Molina? Yeah, actually. <laughs> be great. I'd get right on that. There's a lot of news suggesting maybe they won't right now, and it's making me crazy as a Cardinals fan. It's not good. Right. Well, Two big pieces like um, that. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, so Eric, what the, what's God been up to with you lately, man? Yeah, you know um, – so this, we talked about this summit. Uh, this has been, I've never done anything like this before. I, I did one about 18 months ago and it, it was very, very small. Um, we had some challenges in the middle of it and um, it was, it was hard. And so when I started to set out on this endeavor, it required some things. And I, I, I kind of ran into these limits within my own heart of, I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can ask so many people to show up on my behalf and all these things. And uh, God is just using this time to say, you know, um, you can't do those things, right? Like you, I want you to do those things. And so you're going to break through these walls. And so I have been, um, it's unbelievable. Like I'm really, I'm, I'm excited about it. It's still a little scary, uh, but it's good. God is, God is doing some, some good things. I had, I had a conversation with a friend today that blew up, just blew my mind in ways that I, I could not even have, have imagined um, with opportunity. And I think that's God's inviting me into something new. And so I'm excited about it. Awesome. Awesome. And, uh, I know you mentioned your podcast a couple of times and we talked about where they can go to the summit and we, we even at the beginning of the episode talked about an interview you did with uh, Phil Vischer. Where can oh, people yeah. find that interview and other things you do? Where yeah. Can they follow so you? <laughs> so I, I interviewed, I'll, I'll give you all that. So I interviewed Phil Vischer, uh, who's the creator of veggie tales. He's also on the Holy post with Sky Jatani, Christian Taylor. Um, they, I interviewed him this week for Podcast Magazine. So you can actually just go to podcastmagazine.com slash free to get a free digital subscription. I write for that. I curate the, uh, I'm the category director for religion and spirituality. So I get to feature anybody I want, which is kind of fun. And I get to talk to people that I want to talk to, like Phil Vischer. And I talked to Annie Downs this year and a number of other people who just inspire me. It was that was a lot of fun. So that's a good place to go. Um, podcast magazine. If you're a fan, especially if you're a fan of podcasts, that's the place to go. Um, the other thing is my podcast is called Halfway There. You can find that at halfwaytherepodcast.com uh, or any podcast app that you use is uh, kind of a labor of love. We've had several, multi, multiple thousand years of experience walking with the Lord on that show. And people tell me their story from finding Christ to learning all of the all of the things to the dark night of the soul and how they've discovered themselves and even i think going beyond that into the life of love that jesus intends for us which is always cool when we get to hear those kind of stories awesome all right, all right. so head over there and check it out guys so uh some future guests we're gonna have on our podcast uh we will be having pastor tim register uh caroline harry's of the a cup full of hope podcast uh, Kelly O'Sullivan will be returning. Love that guy. Yeah. And um, we also, this is the last podcast of 2020. So I'll let you guys know uh, next year, we got a lot of really awesome guests planned. Um, he mentioned Christian Taylor of Holy Post Podcast. She's going to be on our podcast talking about her upcoming movie, The Girl Who Wore Freedom. We're going to have uh, Greg Allison. Y'all might have heard that name a lot in our other segment. We use a lot of his stuff for our resources. So he's going to be on the show. We're also going to have Dr. Jemper Longman, the third, who another resource we use a lot. So we're 
going to be talking to the people that you've heard a lot about their books. So uh, if you follow us, that should be exciting stuff for 2021. Mm-hmm. Oh, and, you of know, course, of course, did. yeah, at the end of the season, we will be having Francis Chan. Yeah, he, we do not he know when the know season ends. Right. You know, the season might not end next year. It'll end when he agrees to be on, though. So. Right. <laughs> so it's really up to him if we get renewed for a second season. Yeah, we'll, we'll find out. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Thank you all for listening. Uh, head over, head on over to Patreon for just one last segment we're about to do. Right. And please support us on Patreon. 